So we're in The Hague and I'm speaking with Andy Sutton and he's the chair of Etsy's ISG for NGP, which is Next Generation Protocol. So Andy, good to see you again. Uh, so uh, this is uh, another Etsy group um, and it's very focused on uh, so Next Generation Protocols. Yes, indeed. Can you just tell us uh, about that group and, and what it does and why it exists? Yes, indeed. Well, the group was formed in January of this year, okay. and uh, it was formed along the kind of model of the ISG within Etsy, so very similar to the ISG for mobile edge computing, for uh, networks functions and virtualization, etc. So the same kind of model. Okay. Um, so we, we were formed initially, had the meeting in January, uh, hosted by BSI in the first case uh, in London, and then subsequently we've been meeting at Etsy's HQ in Sphere Antipolis. Now the group was formed by a bunch of people interested in understanding how we could evolve network architectures, network protocols to really better serve the requirements of the connected world in the 21st century. So the uh, premise being that uh, TCPIP has been around for many, many years. It's evolved considerably over that time and has enabled the internet as we know it today. Mm -hmm. However, if we look at TCPIP protocol suite and some of the underlying protocols that come from 3GPP, such as mobility, and then the fact that we add security on top of uh, the 3GPP protocols as well, we end up with a very heavy, very bloated protocol stack okay. with a level of duplication between layers. And as a result of that, we thought if we step back and take a more holistic view of how the internet could evolve in the future, we may actually better match that to the performance and opportunities that next generation networks such as LTE Advanced and its evolution, 5G, Doxis, G.Fast, etc., really offer to operators. Okay, so this is about all kinds of networks then, all kinds of next yep. generation networks. So it sounds like there's a bunch of drivers uh, mm -hmm. that are that are making the requirement and the need for this. So, so what are the what, what are the key drivers for the need for a new protocol and new network architectures? Is it is it end user requirements? Mm -hmm. Is it video traffic overtaking yep. the networks? Yeah, uh, is uh, it uh, all of that? All, all <laughs> of the all of the above and some. To be honest with you, okay. um, I mean, let, let's start with the uh, kind of five G use cases, for example, where talking about ever faster mobile broadband, so kind of um, massive connectivity of Internet of Things, ultra low latency and ultra reliable communication as well. So looking at those um, use cases and applying them across both fixed and mobile networks in the future, right. yeah, how can we actually achieve those results? Well, firstly, again, if we can make the protocol stack slicker, we can reduce latency. If we can change the way layer four, as we know it today, TCP, behaves, we can actually get much higher throughput on the radio channel. Right. Uh, procedures such as uh, slow start, such as congestion management within TCP, okay. all impact the throughput you can get on a radio channel. So actually we can A, make it a faster experience for the end user, and B, make it a more efficient and cost effective process for the operator. Additionally, we want ever lower latency, so again, removing the amount of processing as we go up and down the stack removing the number of messages and processes involved with initially getting an address, getting connected to a network, etc., will help us to realize that dream of lower latency. And in terms of ultra-reliability today, we have lots of different layers trying to do the same thing, trying to deliver a reliable connection. Right. So if we look back historically, we had very slow, unreliable access networks, and therefore we needed something at layer four, for example, TCP, which would actually give us that reliability on the connection. Nowadays, we've got very high speed and very reliable networks with, with very fast uh, recovery from errors at layer one, layer two. And sometimes that actually causes a problem with layer four trying to recover in a similar time. Right. So you, you get a kind of interaction between the layers that wasn't really designed and therefore has a negative effect. So actually understanding again how we can be more aware of what's happening up and down the protocol stack and try and remove some of that duplication will make the end user's experience far better and will allow the operator to actually optimize the network to better serve a larger number of not only people but things as well, of course, as we evolve to the Internet of Things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the NGP group then, um, you're not actually going to be developing standards or specifications. Mm -hmm. What is the group actually doing and, and how have you communicated so far what the group has done? Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's a really good question because the, the group is very much about pulling together a community of interest. So certainly uh, the, the internet is effectively uh, standardized, specified by the IETF. We, we work up front by the IRTF, of course. And uh, there are other standards bodies involved, such as 3GPP, such as the IEEE, in various aspects of 
all the components we put together to build a modern fixed and mobile network. Uh, so what we want to do is actually get that community of interest together to start to have the conversations which aren't really happening in the various organisations today for historical reasons. So in many cases, lots of people are working on particular issues such as addressing, right. or security, or transport layer. Uh, lots of people are working on mobility and security on radio, radio access networks, for example. Lots of people are working on the evolution of Wi-Fi and time-sensitive networks. Okay. So actually, if we look at all that holistically, what would that look like? as a solution right. if you broke down all those barriers and I think it's kind of interesting because we've got lots of people from all of those organizations now contributing okay. to ISGN GP and what we want to do really is produce a number of outputs uh, which actually then feed back into those standards bodies to make sure we get the right liaisons in place and actually then the existing standards bodies take on the task effectively and deliver uh, next generation protocols to make the internet a better place for all of us okay. and the way we're actually doing that is uh, through events like this, for example, we're actually kind of communicating uh, the work that's going on in the organisation. We have a, an Etsy webinar available from the Etsy website, along with a supporting white paper okay. that talks about the kind of key drivers within the industry for NGP. We've just released today our first group specification, which okay. is a very detailed document, uh, which actually covers off a whole range of scenarios against which we could actually measure potential next generation protocols. So do they conform with the requirements for addressing, uh, for throughput, for low latency, for security, energy efficiency is another one of course, right, right. vitally important for the ICT sector to reduce the power consumption. And again, next generation protocols have a role to play there. So there should be an Etsy press release coming out today. Uh, we'll get the document available and hopefully then that'll be picked up by a whole range of organisations who are actually looking at these kind of issues of evolving protocol architectures and they can start to use that as a standard model. So that was actually a piece of work uh, led by Jerry Foster from the University of Surrey's 5G Innovation Centre. Right. And uh, that's our first formal group specification. We have another three group specifications in production at the moment and welcome further ideas and further input to do more work as necessary to help the industry evolve. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the output from the group, I mean, yeah. what can practically be achieved by this ISG uh, and how can the results be actually implemented mm -hmm. by network operators and end users or yep. any other part of the community that's involved? Uh, and, and that really is the big test of, of the work we're doing here within yeah. uh, ISG NGP, absolutely. Um, we're not going to change the internet overnight. You know, we're not going to turn off the internet as we know it today and introduce a clean slate internet, of course. <laughs> that would be quite some challenge, wouldn't yeah. it? Uh, and quite an achievement. But uh, the reality is, of course, we, we need to evolve things. Um, and we've got two approaches. We're doing lots of work on what a clean slate internet could look like. And, and it's very right that we do that. We take that kind of holistic approach of what we want the future to look like. But also, we've got a number of... Uh, work items and conversations developing around how we could introduce incremental improvements potentially to the internet. I mean, certainly um, looking at it from a mobile operator's perspective, anything that would in increase the throughput in terms of application bits per second per hertz, right. so maybe an enhancement to layer four in the short term, that would be of value. And there's a whole range of other things that could help us as well, but certainly aiming towards that kind of new next generation protocol architecture in the fullness of time. There are opportunities to work as, a, as an industry to potentially introduce proxies such that we could interwork between the TCP IP based internet of today and NGP of the future. Okay. So for example, we could look at pushing certain functions from the edge of the mobile network back to the interface to the internet as we know it today. For example, today we carry an IPv6 address, an application uh, service address to the end user all the way across the mobile network to the base station at the base station, we then implement robust header compression, effectively using power, right. so again, uh, and you obviously to drive uh, MIPS and processors to actually implement that feature. But actually, if we implemented that at a gateway and didn't carry that across the network, you know, that would offer some efficiencies because it would reduce the transmission capacity required in the backhaul network, for example. So I think there's a number of things we can do, but actually starting to interwork through proxies is probably the most practical way. Okay. It's probably more practical for mobile operators and fixed network operators to introduce those proxies between their existing internet and their access networks. And then actually, if the set of features we introduce in NGP are compelling, rather than pushing into the internet, what I would expect is a pull. So if we're saying this is more efficient, it's gonna consume lower power, right. it's gonna be more cost effective, 
it's going to give you more return on your investment and actually enable you to offer better services with lower latency, greater reliability, then surely the internet community will pull that into the internet itself. Yes. And that's really where we hope to get, get through, through partnerships with all the various standards organisations and really working as one community with one objective. So nobody's trying to and outplay anybody else here. Right. This really has to be an industry initiative. Yes. Uh, and I think it's beneficial to every internet user globally. Well, it sounds like it, and it sounds like everybody should be supporting this because there's mm. only winners and no losers if, if the Absolutely. ultimate goal can be achieved. So, excellent initiative. Uh, thanks for explaining it today, Andy, and look mm. forward to hearing more about the, the group's work and, yeah. and its impact uh, on, on networking and uh, applications in the future. We'll Thank certainly you. keep you updated. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.